You are listening to Franchise City, interviews with franchises. We are excited to have a very successful franchise entrepreneur on the show today. We'll be focusing on her latest venture. She's acquired the master franchise licensing rights for a very unique emerging franchise brand. That name is Cineholic. Might have seen them on Shark Tank. They're growing very quickly across the USA and Canada. These stores often opening up to lineups around the block. We've got some footage of that we're going to show you shortly. And stay tuned. At the end of the interview, we're going to have a chance to win a box of extremely delicious goodies from Cineholic today. We're speaking with Sandra Jimmerskog. Sandra, welcome to the show. Thank you, Robert. Thank you for having us on your show. So I'm excited to hear more about this latest venture, Cineholic. Been hearing amazing things about this franchise. Could you tell us a bit about them and what made you choose Cineholic over all the hundreds of other options that are out there? Well, I found uh, Cineholic, actually, I saw it myself on Shark Tank. Um, I turned to my husband at that point and I said, we have to be involved with this franchise. (laughs) It is so unique. Um, They started uh, in 2010 in Berkeley, California, right across from the university. Um, A young couple, Shannon and Florian Radke. Um, Mm -hmm. Shannon was a you know, a, a closet baker that uh, is is vegan and was trying out her vegan recipes and came across some amazing recipes that she had uh, had done up for herself and for her, uh, her friends and family. And they decided to open a little bakery. Um, from there, uh, they went and appeared on the Shark Tank in 2014, and it exploded from there. They actually did get a deal with Robert Herchevac on that show. Mm-hmm. And um, after the show, they turned it down. So Robert's vision was to see mass production of the of the rolls, and you know, in every grocery store, that was not their vision because yeah. our rolls are totally customized. Uh, I mean, you couldn't do it that way. So they partnered up with a company out of Atlanta, Georgia, and started on the franchising path. Um, they sold their first franchise in 2015. So yeah. uh, my my draw to them was their uniqueness. I mm-hmm. mean, we we have you know all sorts of burger, sandwich, uh, all sorts of franchises that are, you know, the same. But this this was one of the one of the ones that came up that was extremely unique um, that we we haven't seen before. Mm, absolutely, and I want to get into that growth in a minute because that's super important and that's very exciting. But before we do, we're going to place some images up on the screen. Uh, as we're speaking. Can you tell us the type of food that Cineholic is making? And uh, I'll warn viewers ahead of time, you're definitely going to have some stomach rumbling. <laughs> Absolutely. Everybody's mouth will start watering. <laughs> um, so everything in our in our bakery is made from scratch, which keeps our cost of goods low as well. Um, we have our gourmet cinnamon roll, um, which is baked all day long. Uh, we, we keep them uh, in a warming oven for for a maximum of 30 minutes, so we give our customers the best, freshest product we can give them. We also uh, make up cookie dough. Our cookie dough is sold by the cookie. It's sold by the scoop. It's an edible product. We, we use heat-treated flour, and we also sell it by the container so that you can grab a container, take it home, and make some fresh cookies when you get home. Um, we have brownies as well. Um, and then our toppings. So our toppings, we use our cookie dough for toppings. We use our brownies for toppings, and we use um, we use other ingredients. We use a pie crumble that's made from scratch as well. Um, so everything in our bakery is plant based. Uh, there's no cholesterol being plant based. There's no dairy. Um, there's no milk products. Uh, there's no eggs. So it uh, really appeals to people who are who are vegans, but along with vegetarians, along with uh, you know the the meat eaters as, as well as people with food intolerances. Yeah, and that's a big feature. And it's interesting when I look at some of the social media, you'll see people saying, you know, I'm not a vegan, but I ate this, and it's the best thing that I've ever eaten. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's talk about the growth, growing really quickly across North America, U.S., Canada. Response is amazing. People love the food. We're showing a video on the screen right now of some lineups at some of the grand openings. Can you start off by telling us what location uh, this one is? 
Um, we had a three-hour lineup at our first location that opened in Edmonton. So that location is at 109th of Jasper, right downtown Edmonton. Uh, it was the buzz of Edmonton. Um, we were featured from those lineups. Uh, there was helicopters flying over. They made the news. Uh, they actually invited them on the news to explain this product that, that everybody was lining up for. Um, for our Danforth location, it was it was in the uh, late fall, getting into winter months, and we had the snow coming down, and we had lineups at Danforth. I was going out there, keeping everybody warm with some coffee. <laughs> um, and then our Ottawa location just opened. That's our newest one for Canada, and opened again to two and a half hour lineups. Wow! So, yeah, we we go through huge lineups, uh, which you know continue on, but um, we open big. We do open big. Yeah. And that's something you don't see with it. And I mean, three hour wait, two and a half hour wait, helicopters. Yeah, burgers and fries, just not really that unique when you open up. And I think people underestimate really the uniqueness of uh, something that comes out like this. And you can't put a price on that amount of publicity and that amount of human interest. So that's awesome. Yeah, very true. Very true. So another thing we, uh, we like to discuss here on the channel is the need to invest at the right end of the business growth curve, curve, and we love emerging brands, as our viewers know. Could you tell us a little bit about where Cineholic is as a brand? Uh, how many units are out there? How many are built? How many are awarded? And maybe break that down into both the U.S. and Canada. Absolutely. Um, so the U.S. is over, they've, they've awarded over, over 70, close to 80 locations. Wow. Um, right now we have 30 opened in the U.S., and, and you have to bear in mind that this is all since 2015. Um, there's spots that are sold out. Orlando right now is sold out to one investor that, that has been awarded five locations. We have several cities and several franchisees that own multiple locations. Um, the growth is very, very rapid. Um, at one time, we were opening, doing grand openings one, one every two weeks. Um, <laughs> wow. It was, it, yeah, it, was, it's, it is. It's phenomenal. Uh, we brought uh, Cineholic into Canada at the end of 2017, and, and like I mentioned earlier, um, Edmonton was our first location to open. Since, since then, we've awarded 18 locations across Canada. We have wow. seven open. Hmm. Um, we have uh, a few franchisees that own multi-units as well, hmm. so we, you know, we, we encourage the multi-units. Um, but, yeah, we're, we're, growing, we're growing very rapidly. I, ha I have not seen this kind of growth in other franchises that I've worked with. No, absolutely not. And, you know, you're in the business. You see hundreds and hundreds of franchises, and I would concur with you. That type of growth is a rarity. And what a lot of people don't know is the vast majority of franchises never get beyond five, right? Most franchises yeah. that are out there, they, they are stuck at five, right? And then your next point is 50. And, again, it ties back to getting in the right end of the growth curve. You want to get in at the beginning and ride that brand, not something that's, uh, you know, slowly collapsing. So where exactly are your shops in, in Canada? The ones that are open, uh, we have two locations open in Edmonton. Okay. Um, we have a location open in Winnipeg. We are opening in Vancouver. Uh, we're opening in Halifax. Um, we're just, just working with people in Calgary. Uh, we also have locations opened in Ontario. We have three in the, in the GTA, the, the Toronto area, uh, which is one is at Steeles and Markham Road. Mm -hmm. uh, the other is at the Promenade Mall. Um, nice. We have one location open on the Danforth, which is just a great area. Mm -hmm. And uh, then our newest one is opened in Ottawa. Great. What does a uh, typical store footprint like look like? And um, is there a specific location that is preferred? Um, we like locations that have good foot traffic, good drive-by traffic, um, maybe something that's near a cinema or nightlife, uh, because we, you know, we typically get pretty busy in the evening after dinner, uh, date nights and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, we, are, uh, we are in the Promenade Mall. We're looking at going into um, the Upper Canada Mall right now. Um, but typically, it's it's just where where you've got great traffic um, driving by. Although you know we do draw a crowd too, so so people do do travel to to come to our locations as well. 
Um, the footprint, uh, we're anywhere from 900 square feet mm. to around 1,200 square, square feet. Wow. 900, we have 900 square feet um, at the Danforth location. It's a little tight. I mean, you're not getting the seating that you would at you know an urban location where the rents are a little cheaper. Right. Um, our Ottawa location is just over 1,200 square feet. That, to me, is, is the sweet spot, is yeah. the 1,200 square foot yeah. location. That's amazing. Yeah, that's a nice manageable size footprint. And I know, as you know as well, some of the larger footprints can be a little painful <laughs> in terms of paying monthly rent. So that's great. Yeah. That's great. The other good thing is we don't need venting. Mm, so, right. um, you know, some landlords may ask you to vent, but we don't. We typically don't need venting. We don't have deep fryers. Uh, we don't have the hood systems. Um, uh, we have a small oven that, uh, you know, is, is not needed to be vented. Mm-hmm. So that lets you get into a lot of locations that normally people wouldn't be getting into because the venting is, is an issue. Right. Yeah, that's great. That's good to know. What uh, would it cost someone to get involved in their own Cineholic location? It depends on your location that you get into for construction costs. Mm-hmm. So we do give a wide range because of that. And it's it's anywhere from the high, the high, you know, close to two hundred thousand to just over three hundred thousand. Okay. Perfect. For our for for the cash that you need, um, you know, mo- I'm speaking for Canada. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of the franchisees have been able to obtain financing through our normal banks yep. and the uh, small business loan program, um, and the banks are asking for around a hundred thousand dollars in liquid cash. Okay, so about a hundred liquid, finance the yep. rest. Two to three, somewhere Correct. in that range. Great. That's very Got reasonable. Yeah. Very reasonable. Yeah. Especially when you're getting a lineup around the block. <laughs> I like that. Yes. What's your ideal candidate look like? And uh, are you looking for people who have prior food experience? No, actually not. Um, sin- we're, we're very simple. Our mm-hmm. recipes are simple. Um, you know, you've, you've got two weeks of training. Uh, we make sure that, that you're, you're well trained before we send you off. And we actually train your employees as well. Um, but uh, majority of the franchisees that have come on board do not have baking experience. Mm. Uh, probably 75% to 80% do not have baking experience. Right. They may have, you know, I've you know, done some baking in, in my kitchen, and I love baking. <laughs> right. um, you know, it's a, it's a great relaxing uh, uh, activity for a lot of people. Um, but, you know, we're, we're looking at somebody who has the fire in the belly. They want to do well. Um, they're hardworking, uh, they want to be involved in the business because we always recommend that you know, you're involved at least in the beginning to get to know your business before you step out. Sure. And, and still, even we don't want you to step out. We want your hand to be in that, that business uh, moving forward because we find that those are the most successful people. <laughs> 100%. 100%. Are you finding, and, and this is just my curiosity, are a lot of your franchisees vegan or no? No. Okay. Funny enough, they're not. Um, even when we go and to train the employees, there's a lot of employees that will come on board because we're vegan and, and you know, that's their lifestyle. But when I go into a location and there's 20 employees that we start off with, you may get two employees that are vegan. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. It's good to know yeah. there's that level of flexibility. And, and we have a lot of franchisees that, yeah, they, they, they want to, they're going towards that lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Uh, they see the benefit of the lifestyle. Um, but coming into the system, um, majority are not vegan. Right. Interesting. Interesting. So I want to try and let uh, viewers live vicariously. What would a day in the life look like? So someone is awarded the franchise, they go through the training, they're all set up. What are they doing? Uh, when they start out in the business, and what would that look like? You know, once they are up and running. Well, a big thing managing the business. So just being there every day to to make sure that things are running smoothly um, until you get your employees set, and and you'll you know you'll you'll get a great manager in place if your vision is to to kind of step away from the business or actually open more locations um, where you're managing all of those locations. Yeah, we like we like the owners to be out in the community. Um, you know, we we do we do a lot of catering, um, and catering happens with businesses as well as weddings, showers, get-togethers, all that sort of thing. So we push catering a lot. We're doing corporate events. We do, 
you know, open houses for real estate. Everybody's uh, sick of the same old, same old that that they're putting out at these open houses for their treats. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I won't mention any names, but, <laughs> but so we're we're coming in there. We have something called a baby bun that uh, that we decorate up. Um, it's a great grab and go thing that that is 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 great for for real estate agents bringing in, if you're a sales rep, bringing it into a dental office or a doctor's office. Um, works out really well. Uh, we have done weddings. We've done big corporate events. Um, the Promenade location has done a couple of Adidas mm. events where there are 300 and some odd people are at their wow. corporate corporate place. Yeah, so they'll set up a do-it-yourself bar. Mm-hmm. So that's um, that's something that they do so they can the, the, they can kind of decorate up their own Cinnamon Roll, we'll have a couple of employees there. Deliveries, we're with Skip the Dishes, Uber Eats, DoorDash, Fedora, all those delivery services. Some some locations have a couple of them. Some have three. Some have, you know, one of them. Um, but I think everybody in our system has some sort of delivery service. And then right now what we're introducing, we're just testing it out at a few locations, is ordering online and picking up. So if they don't want to wait because... Typically, we may have lineups. They'll order online, and their order is waiting for them. They can pay online. Mm. Um, so it actually goes right through the system, and it pops up on, we use the Square system for our BOS. Right. It pops up on there and notifies the the, um, the location that there's an order there, uh, and they can get it ready and have it ready for that you know customer coming in. Also, we do Cinecake, so we do birthdays, um, events with Cinecake. So we're getting into that. We're getting into um, some different drink type, you know, like frappe kind of drinks as well. Mm-hmm. Um, we introduced the coffee program in Canada with Kicking and Screaming. And now Daryl has just announced that all of the new locations will now have a full coffee program. Cool. Yeah. And there, there has been absolutely no kickback on the whole it's vegan. I mean, people want something that takes, tastes good. And it sounds like, you know, there's just exactly. mass adoption from a corporate to individual level. Well, and the other thing is that because we're dairy-free and egg-free, yeah. um, there's a lot of people with dairy restrictions that they're not worried about, okay, we have to get a separate, something separate for this person who can't, you know, consume right. what, what, what everybody else is doing. So this is absolutely delicious, and across the board, everybody can, can, can eat it. Yeah. Interesting. We're also mm-hmm. cholesterol free. You gotta like that. You gotta like that. That's <laughs> awesome. Anything that you would like to add before we uh, wrap up? Any news, success stories? And uh, viewers, stay tuned. We're gonna have that special giveaway uh, before we wrap up. We're gonna announce that in a moment. Well, you know, I found this to be a, a fun business, and and I've walked away from grand openings because I, I attend the grand openings in Ontario. Walked away, and I've I've you know questioned the employees. How have you liked it? I'm, I've been here a week with you now. And they said, you know, we thought we'd like it, but we didn't realize how much fun we were going to have. <laughs> yeah. And they just, they're, they're smiling. They're having a great time. Um, it's, a, it's a really fun business to be in. Um, and, you know, we're trendy. We're, we're, you know, big, big on the upswing of the, the, the veganism that's happening right now. Yep. Um, the, you know, the, the vegan food business is, is exploding right now, and to be able to get into that business is, is such a plus right now. Um, they're, they're saying, you know, McLean's, McLean says 2019 is the year of the vegan. Yep. So it's a time to, to, to invest into it. We're also bringing in more products as we go. So we're just introducing a product called Dole Whip, mm-hmm. which some of your viewers might know from, from Disney World, Disneyland. It's it's all through the parks and absolutely delicious. So we're looking at, you know, bringing in more products as we go as well to keep up with everything. We did receive a Veggie Award 2018. We we received from Forbes top 10 franchises um, to invest in that appeared on Shark Tank. Hmm. Entrepreneur Magazine uh, were number nine for the favorite baked goods. It's exciting stuff. Good stuff. So, Sandra, thank you so much for being on the show and educating us on Cineholic. 
Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Great. So for viewers who would like to learn more about Cineholic, we're going to post a link on or below this video. You can click that for more. If you're already on our page, just complete the form below. And viewers who can answer the question on what famous TV show was Cineholic first featured, leave that in the comments below. You're going to be eligible to win a gift card for a box of Cineholic treats if you're near a location or otherwise just a general gift card and leave those answers below. We're going to announce the winners in a future video. Please do not forget to like and subscribe and thank you for watching Franchise City Interviews.